Well, we're going to pick up where Pastor Bill left off last week to get to where we want to be today. So I asked from the skit, really hear what I'm going to say, and uh, it may change how you see things, or it might even make you frustrated because you can't really get a hold of what we're going to say today. But as you trust God and as you allow God to reveal himself to you and allow him to help you see what the word says and how he is today for us because he's God and he was also man. When God stepped off into humanity, he literally took on all of what man was, human beings, I mean, both men and women. And he had to take the whole package and deal with it as a human being that Jesus was, just like we are. But at the same time, he also was God. But he was careful and not using that to not allow him to go through and to overcome what you and I have to overcome. So we have a true witness as fallen human beings that we can, by trusting God and the work of the Holy Spirit in us, we can walk the way God wants us to walk. But it is not in our knowledge, even though you have to have knowledge. It is not in our ability, even though you're going to have to do something. But it is in the full power of the presence and person of God that lives in us that Jesus allowed to happen when he died we get to have the Holy Spirit, everyone. Before that was only a few people where the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being in them, but now it's open to every human being from that time until this day and the days that are yet to come can have the full power of God in them. Now, with that being said, it took me a long while to come to the understanding that that meant that Jesus Christ walked and had a sinful nature. He did not walk in that sinful nature. He did not commit sin, but he had the same nature as we do. That took me a while to really get a hold of that and try to understand that. Uh, if you can't find... But Jesus was truly all of what a human being can be on this earth. But he allowed and made decisions to serve and honor God because God was also in him and gave him the ability to not have sin because he had God's nature in him and he stayed in that all the time. Even when he was surrounded by prostitutes, surrounded by alcoholics, all the things of that day he was surrounded by. He walked. He did not struggle with it like we do. You know, I struggle with my sinful nature at times. But Jesus didn't struggle. He just walked in what God had intended, him and the Father and the Holy Spirit intended the original mankind to walk in the first place like they did in the garden. They had natures, human natures. But at that point, they didn't have a sinful nature until they disobeyed God. But from that time on, we inherit that. When I started really thinking about that, then it made really a more understanding when I realized what really happened when Jesus is on the cross 
and he's crying, why have thou forsaken me? Because God really had to forsake the human qualities of Jesus at that time because he was standing in for us, for the sins that we had. And literally, God had to look away because humanity was upon him, and it, Jesus took it on, stood by himself to please the Father and himself and the Holy Spirit and gives us a justification now under the blood of Jesus to say the penalty has been paid. And as I walk in that forgiveness, my sins, whether intentionally or not intentionally, are forgiven. But unless I bind together with faith into what Jesus done for me, I can say I don't want that. I can say I don't believe in that. And God gave us a ability to choose and choice. So now that the penalty of death is dealt with, do you want what is on the other side of that, which is forgiveness? Now, if you don't want it, you are you doing your God-given right to choose. I don't want it. But God wants us, as he did, to make, excuse me, to make sure you understand what you're choosing. To really understand that do not do it foolishly. Do not do it because you're deceived. Do it knowing that if I choose I don't want God or his forgiveness, I'm doing it with a conscious understanding. I don't want that. Because he loves you. He created you, not just for life then, but for life then and for when it's forever and ever. And that plan hasn't changed. Now, things got set in order. And God is dealing with humanity. And there's coming on a day that he'll say no more. But until that time, the only rescue, the only peace humanity can have is embracing the provision that God left. Now, while he was here, he showed that he had the same qualities and responsibilities that his father had. So he was able to forgive people. He was able to bring life back. When people died and they came to him and he prayed for those, they got up and went on to live. He showed that, especially in the one scene where they bring a lady to him who's done some wrong, and Jesus makes this statement, okay, yes, she's wrong, but only people can cast a stone have to because you haven't sinned, and they all were convicted knowing that they have sinned. Maybe not as bad as her, but they knew they had. Then, when it was all over with, it was just him and the lady standing there. And, he, and the lady said, where, where are your, he says, where are your accusers? They're gone. Jesus was the only one could justifyly pick up that stone and stone that lady. But he didn't come here for that. He came to show forgiveness and heal and allow you to be all that God has equipped us to be as human beings, even though we're in our fallen state. And he did that. That is so cool. But sometimes we forget that it's about God really loving the ones he created. To the point, he was willing to wear <laughs> raggedy clothes, which is a human appearance, compared to his glory and all that he was. He took this on 
So he would, from his own experience, know what it is to know pain, to know what it is to know and be challenged by the enemy as a human being. Now we notice Satan, right after Jesus gets baptized, Satan comes to him. Oh, well, he's a, he goes to the woods, Satan comes to him and tried to test him or tempt him in his humanity and make him step off and being God and deal with the situation as being God. Jesus didn't go for it. He is God. And he simply told Satan what the word says, who he is in the word, and it took care of itself. We have to do that now, too. We have to realize as children who now have the blood of God over us and his spirit in us and with us, we have to see our situation the same. When we stand before a temptation and we know in our hearts that this is not the right move, even though it might be something we're used to doing, but now that we're seeing from a perspective of being saved, God gave us his Holy Spirit, which means not only do we have his spirit, but we have the same nature that Jesus had as a human being in us as God. The Holy Spirit's in us. And in Corinthians and a number of other places, uh, Galatians, it shows you what the fruits of the nature of God are, and they're now in you, so you can walk like Jesus did now in areas that you can walk and flow and do the things that God did through Jesus in the way you live. And he's wanting us to do that and reflect to the world that's around us that he's still the same then, the same today, and the yet to come, and he's doing that through us. Now, there is great debate today around the world in the religious world, whether it's Christian or not, the reality of who Jesus really was. Many are willing to accept that he was human and he just done a lot of good things. But they're not really willing to accept that he was also God and he was perfect. And he did not have this Ability to act as though now I can magically not do things. He simply walked in power and in strength of who he really was. And it was power. It wasn't any tricks. It wasn't any, all those other things. It was simply because he was God. And he was here on our behalf. And today we're trying to minimize that as that he was holy, but he doesn't really want to touch the really bad. He really doesn't want to come to you in the state that you are. So if you're really twisted, if you're really uh, demon-possessed or just plain mad, Somehow we say that you got to get right first and come see God. Yet the Bible says he's willing to come see you right in that state and get right next to you and put his arms around you and love you. Now, he doesn't want you to stay that way. But he's not so holy that he can't embrace you in your messed up ways. That he'll come to you no matter how you are. 
But there is one requirement again. You have to believe. Not just from an intellectual perspective, because sometimes that doesn't work. You want it to work, but faith takes you beyond that. It takes you beyond what scientifically could be right or what could be in theory right. God goes beyond that. So you have to take faith in order to embrace that because your mind is saying, well, logically, this won't work. Logically, there's no one can walk across the water. Well, obviously, if you've been pronounced dead and you've been dead for a matter of time, someone come over to pray for you can't possibly happen. But faith takes you beyond natural things. And it's not because you totally understand it, because you probably don't. It's just God put something in us that allows us to have faith. And it grows, and it matures. And that's the only requirement that God requires that we have, and that we embrace him with faith. And again, it's all right to bring your intellect. It's all right to do all of that. But the bottom line is through faith. Through faith, I accept what the Bible says, that God formed everything. There's nothing that sneaks up on him. I personally will never understand what it is to be everywhere all at the same time. I believe that, but I don't quite understand that. (laughs) So I don't try. I just believe it. I just accept it. And I know that right now, everybody in this room, God is in each one of us. He's talking to us. I just accept it. I don't know how, you know, how I can figure that out. I can't explain that. I just know that. I know that for myself personally. Now, right now in our life, that's being challenged more than any time on the planet Earth. I think it might be more challenged as time goes on. But we're at the time, I think, even greater than when Babel was being established, where man had this unity and had knowledge of that day to where they were trying to build something that would take them into the heavens. And the Bible said that they can do this. Okay? Now, he confused them so they couldn't do that. But in the ability and the, in, in the wisdom and all of that was obviously there way back then. Well, here we are today with technology that either you believe that God gave man that knowledge to be a good steward of the planet, or you believe that he didn't. And you just, people have the ability to put these things together to where even today we actually have found the secret God has allowed us to do to go into DA sales and do all kinds of stuff that we're doing. But yet, that doesn't make us God. And because we are evil (laughs) from the core, even the best of us, Look what we're doing with the technology and knowledge we do. We have caused greater problems than we have solved. And yet we're saying that there's no real God but ourselves. And the Bible clears there is coming one that the Bible gives him the title of the Antichrist, which means he's against Christ. He's against Jesus, he's against the anointed one. Not only is this a person, but it's a spirit, and it's coming upon this earth right now. They even talked about it in uh, the Old uh, New Testament time, the spirit of the Antichrist. That spirit is greater now, and unfortunately, sometimes it finds itself in churches and confusing things. But we have to really embrace that God is totally God and Jesus was totally man and he acted like it all the time. Yet, 
He still needed to eat and do all the things we do. He dealt with anger. He was very angry when he, I think it's two times, but sometimes it reads like it's one, when he went into the synagogue and they was mistreating it, and he got angry and threw things around, just like us humans. Now, the difference is he didn't come um, vendetic. He just said, this is my father's house, and get this stuff out of here. But he still did it because he loves us, and he was realizing that we had lost the people then, had lost the real worship, the whole reason that the temple was there when it was created or built was to share and love God in a building and honor him. And God blessed it, allowed it, allowed a man, a Solomon, to build it. And here it is now, you're not using this to honor my father. And Jesus made it clear he didn't like it. He made it clear of the priest and the leaders of that day, and it was God, through Moses, set up the authority and passed it down to fives, tens, a thousand. So God was all in that, but here it is now, and Jesus is on the earth, God himself, and they're making their authority greater than God's. And they're not allowing a true relationship to come, and Jesus takes that and says, wait a minute, this is not right. Yet you claim to honor my father, yet you won't honor me. And they couldn't get their heads around it because they couldn't accept that God would come that way. Not only did he come that way, he didn't come that way in somebody that was uh, famous, somebody that was really honored. He come in just an ordinary human being, as far as what he looked like, Carpenter, which I don't think in that day, Carpenter was all, I mean, it was an important thing, but it wasn't one of those things everybody wanted to be. Yet that's what Jesus was, a carpenter. His, his stepfather was a carpenter, so he picked up that trade until it was his time to actually begin to do ministry. They seen him play. They seen him with their sisters and stuff, and some of them probably played with him. And He's standing there, especially the first time he went into the synagogue and took his rights to go up to the pulpit, uh, well, I didn't call it pulpit, but to go up to the pulpit and begin to preach. And when he says, this day, this word is fulfilled. Now, here we are, we get excited by that, especially those who want to believe. But they got angry. They got mad, and the Bible says they wanted to throw him off a hill there. But he kind of disappeared or just went through because it wasn't his time yet. It is so cool to know that God was willing to live like us in our fallen state so we could see how much he loves us, what he's willing to pay, so we can be redeemed and wind up in the purposes that God has created mankind for and to be able to return to the atmosphere and world that God has, that we're going to have when everything is so. All because he loves us. And he loves us now. Everyone. I have made people angry saying this, but the real issue is that every human being is saved right now. Now, not every human being ever is going to accept that and walk in it, but it's a done deal. It was done when God created the earth. And it was done when he actually came here and paid the price. It's done. Finish. Done deal. Now, it's about whether you choose to believe that or not. <laughs> That's on you. But it's done work. Which 
even when I come to know God and I slip away, there's no more him dying again. I have to come back to that original belief I had, pick it back up, and God will help me go on with my life. It's okay if you do get baptized four or five times because you want to, because you did things, but it's not necessary. Okay? Because the work has already been done for you. And he's willing to keep coming after you time after time until you have your last dying breath and you still choose not to accept it. Then you have no more chance. That was taught back way, way back that you did. That there was a place your soul went and then someone could pray or pay and you could be redeemed and go to heaven. But that is really not true. Uh, they actually had a name for it and I can't pronounce it, so I won't try to say it, <laughs> what this place was called. But there's no such thing. Once you leave here, it's over for you. Either you are saved or you're not. And God loves us enough that if you do choose to wait to the last minute and you get in, God still loves you and he's going to honor that even though you spent up until your dying moment to reject him. Isn't that really love? To God is still willing, even though all the rest of the time you hum hog. But in that moment that you realize you were gone, you sincere, excuse me, you sincerely asked him and he was there. I I am so thankful that he never turned his back on me, even though many times I did him. And nor did he change the destiny for my life. That was never going to come to pass until I trusted him, but he didn't change. And the same for all of us. And we are being taught that it's about works. Not that we're taught here, but we're being taught that works is what works. So I can live any way I want, but if I still go out and help people and show my love for people, then that's a trait. That's not what the Word of God says. That's good that you do that. I won't say that's a bad thing. And I won't say what you didn't do wasn't a good thing. It's just it won't bring you in to forgiveness, and it won't bring you in to his love. The only thing that will help you embrace his love is your faith and acceptance of what Jesus did for you. And then allowing that, while you have breath in your life, to govern you. Now, Jesus did a lot of wonderful things. But he said some things that say that we and generations after him, which we're here now, that we could do the same thing. His power, his anointing, God wants to put on every believer's life. Now, it may not look like what Jesus did. We may not stand and be a preacher. We may not uh, see thousands and millions of people. But for the atmosphere or, or for focus that God has put your life in, you can produce the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit can work through you, and you can reflect God, just like Jesus did. Because he made it out. And he's given us the ability in our spirits to connect and the Holy Spirit literally wants to work various giftings that are attached to the purpose and power and glory of God in every believer's life. He wants to do that. So the world that they are around can see the kingdom of God, and we can step out of history and 
accept present day reality of God right now, just like they did when he was here on earth. He made it that way. And he said there's coming a generation that will see and experience the full glory of God. And I think that's in our generation. We have the opportunity as humans to really see the things that Jesus really did, but through other believers and his presence. But we have to desire to expect that, and we need to have faith to trust that. And you're qualified. It had really nothing to do with how long you've been a Christian. I won't say that doesn't help. I won't say there isn't some good benefits and all of that. But God doesn't look around and says, well, you only got two months, so I won't work through you. If your heart's right, he always wants to work through you. Sometimes because your heart isn't right, you miss what he wants to do. Isn't that he's not trying to do it? You just miss it. And I don't know what it really means to say your heart's not right. So let me get that straight. But he does. Part of it is, are you in love with God? Are you desiring to be his servant? Are you desiring to bring glory to him? Those things, I would say, will definitely make makes it that you have his heart and you have a good heart in towards God's things. I think that would definitely be open for you. But when you want to bring glory to yourself, or you want to do these things like the one man that that came to, uh, I believe it might have been Peter or Paul, I forget exactly when, I think it was Paul, but he came and offered money to get the gifts of the Holy Spirit so he could do some of the things that the apostles and people were doing. And the person said, you know, actually, that heart of yours has caused you to be blind for a while. So you can really see the ugliness of your heart. Now, this man actually believed. He he was converted. But he didn't understand the whole transformation that God was doing, and he thought he could own it. And he found out he couldn't. They don't say anything later what happened to the guy. Did he ever repent, come back? They don't really go there, so no one really knows what happened after that. I think there is a danger, though, when you start focusing on the miracles that God did and can do and not focus on him. There are things that happen in our lifetime, everyone is sitting here, that you could read about or hear about how there was a miraculous miracle done. But don't go chasing those things. Chase the one that those things represent and glorify. Chase that, which is Jesus. But like he told his apostles, Go out, split up in twos, heal the blind, well, heal, cast out devils, do all kinds of stuff. And they came back excited, and he told them not to be all that excited, but to be excited the fact that their names are written in his book. Yet they did what he told them to do. So we got to keep the right focus on. Jesus Christ is my Savior. He came here in a body like mine. He didn't walk in a sinful nature, but he had one as a human. And he walked as himself, and he walked in his purpose, and he left it and made the ability that you and I can do the same thing today. And we live in a world where we're being forced to step up. 
you're in situations where somebody says something and you feel your heart burst. You feel this desire to say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. I may not have an answer to why your child died or why this happened or that happened. But I know God didn't do that. And he definitely didn't do that so you'd be afraid of him. Now, yes, he controls everything. I don't understand why some things happen other than sin is here. But it, we have this promise from God that he can take even the worst thing and turn it into good for his glory and to give you a pleasure of his love and joy in that situation. He does give us that promise. And as we continue to move and live in this time that we now live in, we have to be really willing to trust God totally. We need to stay in our word, stay in prayer and communication to God. Because he said there was coming a time that deception could fool the very elect. So we have to make sure we're in contact with the Spirit of God that's in us. We're in fellowship. We're in all these things that help us to stay focused in a time that is very wicked and confusing. But it's the time that God said he would reveal himself to the whole world. There won't be any segment of humanity that God is not touching. Now, they may have rejected but he's raising up people and every from the very lowest, from people who are homeless, from people who are uh, presidents and all that in between. He's put people who love him, who know him, to be a witness to their environment. So he doesn't want anyone to stand in the judgment that he has for all those who do not obey and do not love him or honor. He doesn't want us to do that. That was designed for Satan and his kingdom, not for human beings. So I leave it with this. He acted like his father. He walked in power. He forgave people. He cast out demons. He brought light to those who were blind. And he gave life to all of us if we only believe. Thank you.